Hello and welcome to another Scardcast unit by unit series. Today we begin the long drawn out process of discussing <gasps> Codex Space Marines. We'll be looking at the Space Marine Codex, we'll be looking at the supplements. Sit down, relax, let's begin. Hello and welcome to another unit by unit series here on Scardcast. I am Skari, your grateful host. This is a series that I have done before for the Dark Eldar and other different codexes. If you'd like to check out those series or playlists, check the links down in the description below. However, today we start the deep dive into the new Codex Space Marines. It was recently released. It will have a variety of different codex supplements which will get their overall chats from me in turn. So there's a chance for you to essentially dive into each of the unit choices and what they are and what you can expect, unit upgrades, stats, that sort of thing. So I also do it in two parts. The first part I talk about the lore of the specific unit. So you get to know a little bit about the Space Marines themselves or the units that I'm talking about and then we discuss the in-depth analysis of a unit from my point of view. Of course there will be some bias as I am a Dark Eldar player and all of these make great prizes for the Dark City. So without further ado, let's begin. I hope you enjoy this series. The first thing I want to talk about are the Space Marine Special Rules. The Space Marine Special Rules are something that will affect almost all, if not most of, the Space Marines, regardless of what supplement they come from, regardless of what chapter they belong to. Therefore, it's uh, good for me to sort of just touch base with them. I'm not going to go into too much depth. If you want to learn more about the stratagems, combos, special unique tacticas and stuff, I will be doing that on a Patreon video. So if you'd like to help me out on Patreon and get access to all the additional content I create, you can check the link down below. Defenders of Mankind are a variety of different special rules. First of all, you have to select a chapter for your Space Marines. So anything in the book that has the keyword chapter really means Ultrines, Blood Angels, um, Freds, Ultra Smurfy Smurfs, whatever you have decided to name your chapter, um, you can actually put them within there. You cannot choose Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Grey Knights, Legion of the Damned, or Space Wolves, a.k.a. you cannot make them have rules from other books that are Marines that always already have rules, which makes sense. They have a war gear list where they can pick from the special war gear, heavy weapons, sergeant war gear, that sort of thing. They have the abilities, which is called Angels of Death. So the Angels of Death ability... It's a new ability for this codex, which encompasses one, two, three, four special rules combined into one. They receive, and they shall know no fear, which allows them to re-roll the dice when taking a morale test. Um, now, m this also means you can re-roll it to pass or to fail. So if you need them to run away, you can re-roll it to hope that they fail to therefore kill a model that is being wrapped in combat or something like that. Very interesting to note. They get the Bolter Discipline Rule. So they do not follow the normal rules for rapid fire weapons. They double the amount of shots for with rapid fire weapons if they are within half the weapon's maximum range. So they basically get to shoot, right? So they get to shoot twice, right? The firing model is infantry and every model in the unit remains stationary. And the, or the model is a Terminator, Biker, Centurion, or Dreadnought. Then they basically get to rapid fire at full range, which is pretty cool. And it's any bolt weapon that has the rapid fire rule. They also get the rule, Shock Assault. When this unit makes a charge move, is charged, or heroically intervenes, you add plus one attack. This is um, sort of comes down to a lot of old editions where when you charged, you got an extra attack. 
Space Marines have the uncanny ability to get additional attacks when they charge, when they are charged, or they heroically intervene, which makes them a lot more efficient at doing damage over the course of the game. And the last and most interesting special rule given to Space Marines by the Angels of Death is the Combat Doctrines special rule. So, models in a unit with Combat Doctrines gain a bonus um, based on the battle round that is being played at the moment. They, any servitor and underlying units don't have this. However, you lose this bonus if you have any models in your army that do not have the Combat Doctrine special rule. So, want to take that special assassin in your Space Marine list? Think twice if it's worth losing all the bonuses that come from Combat Doctrines, which also ties in, as we will see later, to the supplements, where each supplement gives a specific chapter a bonus based on one of the combat doctrines that better suits the specific chapter. You get Devastator Doctrine, Tactical Doctrine, and um, Assault Doctrine. The entire army always starts on Devastator Doctrine, and they have to do at least one full turn on Devastator Doctrine. During then, you get... Um, uh, you get plus one AP on your heavy and grenade weapons. Cool, so plus one AP for heavy weapons, plus one AP for grenade weapons. Not too shabby. At the start of the second battle round, essentially, you can then switch it down to the next lowest, which is Tactical Doctrine. You don't have to, but you can. But in Tactical Doctrine, all the AP, or armor piercing value of rapid fire and assault weapons, is plus one as well. And then last but not least, Assault Doctrine, where... If you have pistols or close combat weapons, it adds an additional AP to those. So those are the general rules that govern the Space Marines. With that in mind, let's dive in to the Space Marine. The first and foremost unit that we're going to see are in the story in the Codex called Commanders, also known as Captains and Lieutenants. So let's take a look a bit at the story behind them. These, of course, are the stories read directly from the Codex themselves. So if you'd like to go read the story and the fluff and the lore, make sure you go get yourself a copy of the GW Codex and or uh, the electronic version, all that good stuff. Those who command the Space Marines in battle are glorious ex exemplars of all their chapters stand for. The most magnificent, skilled, and inspirational individuals amongst a fraternity of champions. It is their duty to fight, lead, strategize, inspire, and endure to a level that even their battle brothers can only aspire to one day emulate. There are two types of commanders. You have captains and lieutenants. Captains. Each company in a chapter of the Adeptus Astartes falls under the command of a captain. It is often said that a space marine is worth at least ten other soldiers. Under the leadership of a captain, this value swells even further, for they coordinate their warriors with deadly precision and inspire their followers to fight with a dedication and spirit that cannot be instilled by discipline and training alone. Captains are experts in the use of all manner of specialist equipment. They are also unerringly accurate marksmen able to pick off foes with a sniper's skill. While in close combat, they leave a trail of bloodied and fallen foes in their wake. So as you can see here, captains are the heroes of the Space Marines. And this is encouraged in their unit entries within the Codex themselves. So, for Codex Space Marines, they are none other, none other than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of captain that you can include in a Space Marine book. And one, two, three, three different types of lieutenants. 
So out of the entire HQ force, 10 choices can be captains and or lieutenants. They're pretty similar all in all, and we'll kind of skim through them. But it's very hard to focus on one type of captain without talking about all types of captains and lieutenants. The first one is the Primaris Captain. And then you have another type of Primaris Captain, which is the Captain in Gravis Armor. And then you have another Primaris Captain, which is a Captain in Phobos Armor. They all have d unique rules and abilities. The Primaris Captain is a basic Captain. Movement 6, Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill 2, Strength and Toughness 4, Wounds 6, 5 Attacks, Leadership 9, and a 3 plus Armor Save. This is a standard sort of baseline that you're going to see across most of the Space Marine line, especially Strength 4, Toughness 4. They are equipped with a bolt pistol, a master-crafted auto-bolt rifle, frag grenades, and crack grenades. The master-crafted auto-bolt rifle is a 24-inch Assault 3 Strength 4 2 damage weapon, so it's really good at doing 2 damage. Because it's Assault 3, as soon as you go into Tactical Doctrine, it will become AP minus one, which is pretty cool. Uh, Mastercrafted Auto, yeah. Um, the options you have are you can give it a power sword, or you can give it a power fist and a plasma pistol, and you can also give it a Mastercrafted Auto bolt rifle. Pretty cool. This model can be equipped with one Mastercrafted Stalker bolt rifle instead of the Auto bolt rifle. And the Stalker bolt rifle is three damage, heavy one, so it becomes minus an extra AP, so it's AP3 at 36 inch range, which is pretty cool. And it's a one shot heavy weapon. It does have the Angels of Death ability, has a four up and vulnerable save with its Iron Halo, and all chapter, remember that chapter thing, units within six inches of the model, reroll ones to hit. The faction keywords are Imperium, Adeptus Astartes, chapter, it is a character, it's infantry, it's Primaris, and it is a captain. It is not the most varied in terms of unit choices because of the kit availability. However, it's one of the more versatile captain choices. You make it a shooty captain, you make it a close combat captain. The captain in Gravis Terminator armor is almost exactly the same. You lose a point of movement for five inches, you gain a point of strength for strength five, and you gain one wound, making him seven wounds, toughness five, and only five inch movement. He is equipped with a Bolt Storm Gauntlet and a Master Crafted Power Sword. The Bolt Storm Gauntlet can be used in melee. It is a Power Fist, essentially, uh, 2 times Strength, so it becomes Strength 10, minus 3 AP, and D3 damage, but it's minus 1 to hit in close combat. In shooting, it's a 12-inch pistol, 3 shots, Strength 4, 1 damage. Remember, in Assault Doctrine, his Gauntlet would become minus 4 AP, and his pistol would become minus 1 AP. He also has a Master Crafted Power Sword, which is a minus 3 AP 2 damage, just basic strength, so strength 5 on a Gravis Captain sword. He has no other options, but he does have Angels of Death, an Iron Halo for a 4 plus invulnerable save, and he also gives, so the Captains have rights of battle, that's standard across all Captains, reroll 1s to hit for all Chapter units within 6 inches. Imperium Adeptus Astartes Chapter, Character, Infantry, MK-10 Gravis, Primaris Captain. That's important because some transports cannot carry MK-10 Gravis armor. Then we have the Captain in Phobos armor. He keeps the 6-inch movement, keeps the same web skill, ballistic skill, uh, wounds the same, strength, toughness, attacks, and leadership, and save the same as the basic Primaris Captain. However, where the Phobos Captain comes into play is with its tactical nuance. He is armed with a bolt pistol, a mastercrafted instigator bolt carbine. So remember, this is a wordful, <laughs> lots and lots of words. A combat knife, frag grenades, crack grenades, and has a camo cloak as well. Bolt pistol, pretty standard. Master Crafted Instigator Bolt Carbine is a 30 inch Assault 1, Strength 4, minus 2 AP, 3 damage weapon that can target characters. So it's a 3 damage weapon, 30 inches, Assault 1, so move and shoot without penalty, that can target enemy characters, which is pretty awesome. 
His combat knife can make an additional attack in close combat, so he will have six attacks in close combat. And he has frag grenades and crack grenades, which are either d6 strength three shots or one strength six shots minus one d3 damage within six inches. So if you don't want to shoot his cool carbine, he can shoot the mastercrafted instigator bolt carbine. Angel of Death, concealed position. So when you set up this model, uh, it can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone and any enemy model. So it essentially infiltrates, or the new version of infiltrate. It also has an Omni Scrambler, so enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements. So you cannot deep strike or arrive via reinforcement um, within 12 inches of this model. Very, very useful against Gene Steel Cult, Blood Letter Bomb, Zangors, Deep Striking, Dark Eldar that are trying to eat you. Uh, it's really cool. So you can really, like this guy, the Captain of Phobos Armor is one of the best captains you can get for a current Space Marine book. Iron Halo, so four up involve save, right to battle, rerolls, and a Camel Cloak. So it gets plus two to the saving throws, so plus one when receiving the benefit of cover, making him a one plus armor save, which can be really handy against um, lower armor piercing value weapons as well. Then we have some of the old school guys, which are the Captain and Terminator armor, the Captain and Cataphracti Terminator armor, a regular Captain, a Captain on a bike. <laughs> so these are the non primaris versions of the Captains, and they tend to be a little bit more toolkitty. You can really sort of equip them a lot uh, with a lot more different options than the Primaris captains. However, they're still just as useful, just as effective, just as important in your Space Marine army. So the basic premise of the captain stays the same. Five inch movement for a Terminator armor captain. Uh, two plus weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength up to four, six wounds, four attacks um, instead of five attacks. Leadership 9, 2 plus save. He has a Storm Bolter and a Power Sword as a basic equipment. So a Rapid Fire 2, 24-inch gun. However, remember, with Bolter Discipline, it always counts as being in half range. So he's basically got four shots all the time. Uh, he can take a wrist-mounted grenade launcher if you give him a Power Fist, which is pretty cool. It's a D3 shot weapon, essentially. You can give him a couple of options. You can take... Instead of a Storm Bolter, you can have a Terminator Combi weapon or a Terminator Melee weapon. So you can change it for like a Thunder Hammer or something like that. Instead of the Power Sword, you can give him a Chain Fist, a Relic Blade, or another Terminator Melee weapon list. So you can really customize him to be killy or shooty. You can give him a Storm Shield, right, if you really want to. And if it's equipped with one or more Power Fist, can have the Wrist Mounted Grenade Launcher. If you make him a Terminator Captain, he has the ability to Deep Strike, so you can keep him off the table in the Teleportarium and then bring him in within 9 inches of the enemy. And he gets right to battle, has an Iron Halo, and if you do give him a Storm Shield, it is a 3 plus invulnerable save. So, pretty cool, and he's a Terminator. <laughs> Boop! Um, 6 wounds. A Captain in Cataphracti Terminator armor is another kind of Terminator. He comes equipped with a Combi Bolter and a Power Sword. Combi Bolter is essentially a Storm Bolter, pretty much the exact same thing. Um, he can have a Terminator Combi Weapon List and a Melee Weapon List, very similar to the regular Terminator. He can, it, the reason I'm going through all these really quickly is they're pretty much the exact same. So once you kind of know one, you know pretty much all of them. Um, they can be equipped with a Chain Fist, Relic Blade, or a Melee Weapon as well, Thunder Hammer, that sort of thing. You can have a Storm Shield instead of being equipped with a combi, bolter, or power sword. So you can give him a storm shield. However, Cataphracti armor and an iron halo, this model has a 3-up invulnerable save, and when this model advances, you have the result of the advance roll. So he's a little slower. However, he has a 3-up invulnerable save even without a storm shield, making him very resilient to regular shooting. Has right to battle, and has a teleport strike, so you can teleport him, deep strike him 9 inches away from the enemy as well. The regular captain and captain on bike, um, pretty standard. The regular captain just suffers from one less wound and has one extra movement. The Cataphracti Terminator armor, by the way, is movement four, so he's like super, super slow. And he has a three plus save. The regular captain does. Comes with a Mastercrafted bolt gun, which is a rapid fire one, two damage, minus one. A bolt pistol, chainsaw, frag, and crack grenades. 
However, this is where the Smash Captain comes from because you can give him a jump pack, a thunder hammer, a storm shield. This is like the unit entry that people make to use the Smash Captains, which have been iconic throughout most of 8th edition uh, since the Blood Angels made that sort of loadout popular. Uh, still has Angel of Death, Rights of Battle, Iron Halo. And if you do give him a jump pack, he can teleport as well, or deep strike, essentially. The captain on a bike has an extra toughness, making him toughness 5, very similar to the Gravis captain. 6 wounds as well. Still uh, movement 14 instead of 6, so he moves really fast. He is equipped with twin bolt guns, so basically a double uh, twin bolt gun is essentially a, a storm bolter. Um, a chainsaw frag crack grenades. You can also give him a power sword, a thunder hammer, a storm shield, etc, etc. And when he advances, he auto moves 6 inches to the characteristic. So he can move up to 20 inches. Great when you're combining him with some uh, traits or psychic powers from the new marine books and supplements where you can advance and charge, making him extremely fast to get to where he needs to go. However, being a bike, he currently cannot go up on the second floor of ruins, means he's going to be a terror on the ground floor, but can't really go anywhere further than that. Then we'll take a quick look at lieutenants in the next video. But I hope you've enjoyed the first of this unit-by-unit unit series. And we'll return with the next video, lieutenants.